Poo in the blustery day is taken to the extreme when mercenary Poo is betrayed by his government and forced to kill his ally and best friend, Bambi. We're going to talk about a very strange issue, Poo versus Bambi number one from Zenoscope. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Poo versus Bambi number one from Zenoscope Entertainment. And the, let's talk about the credits. This issue is written by Noah Mitchell with art by Jordi Tarragona, colors by Juan Manuel Rodriguez, and letters by Taylor Esposito. And the main cover, cover A, is drawn by Igor Vitorino. Before we dig into the issue, let's recap how this is even possible. Uh, as you may or may not have heard recently, uh, Pooh Bear, or Winnie the Pooh as, mo as he's most commonly referred to, has entered public domain. Now, that doesn't mean you can do anything you want with Winnie the Pooh and, and just go hog wild crazy. There are certain restrictions. So, for example, the Disney version of Winnie the Pooh it has its own unique title and look and set of characters and situations that you can't just borrow willy-nilly. You can only borrow from the original story uh, from the original book by, um, I believe it's uh, Barry is, is the writer's last name. So, but having said that, now we get a plethora of creators that want to do things with the original Pooh Bear, and that's how we got to this story. And this also applies to Bambi as well. So here we go. Pooh versus Bambi number one kicks off with a black ops operative type operation in the Hundred Acre Wood. The, a compound containing scientists doing some kind of art research and development is raided by a group of hybrid animals that are a combination of mostly human bodies, very muscly, very strong, and mostly animal faces. And you can see right up the front, they have Pooh, Bambi, Tigger, uh, Mr. Rabbit, <laughs> Mr. Owl, and uh, Eeyore as, an, as a group or, or example. And they come in hot just like Rambo and any other 80s action hero you can imagine. They storm the gates of the compound. They're shooting everybody down, ripping out guts, you're getting headshots, you're getting explosions, you're getting grenades, you're getting rapid fire from automatic weapons, everything under the sun. And eventually they wipe out most of the guards and the squadrons that are providing defense for the compound until they get to the inner sanctum or the inner core of the building. Their mission is to capture the lead scientist who's doing illicit or illegal operations at the heart of the compound. Bambi gets there first before Pooh and he gets the shock or the surprise of his life. It turns out that Bambi, Pooh, and everyone else weren't experiments that were grown in the lab. They were woodland creatures that were part of the forest and they were abducted from their homes and transformed into these well-muscled machines of murder and mayhem that are being used by the government. Bambi is so shaken by the revelation that he sort of loses it a little bit. Pooh tries to calm him down, said, let's gather up these files, let's gather up the materials and get back to General Robin because he's our friend. If anybody can straighten it out, he can. But Bambi is shook to the core. The argument between Pooh and Bambi starts to get heated and Bambi tells him, hey, come with me, I'm going to show you what they've been working on. And he brings him into this laboratory area and they see a vial of glowing goo and liquid and it contains the DNA that transforms the woodland creatures into animals. Bambi says, look, we can't go back to General Robin because he's lying to us because everybody's lying to us. We can't trust anybody at this point. It's just you and me, my friend, we got to get out of here and we've got to go on the run. Pooh, however, still has some loyalty to General Robin. He says, look, we can't do this. If you do this, we're, we're just making things worse. Let's get back to General Robin. We'll get it all straightened out. We'll get the files authenticated, make it happen. The, es the argument gets heated. Uh, the, they start to escalate. And then Boob Bambi uh, leaps to the attack saying, if you won't come with me, I've got to put you down because I can't have you chasing me. And he forces, basically forces Pooh to shoot him and leaving his friend for dead. We then cut to a scene, which is sometime later, uh, possibly months, possibly weeks, maybe even a year or two. And we find that Pooh is just undercover moving from mountain town to mountain town and from forest to forest because he's completely abandoned everything that he cared about. He's put on a lot of weight. He's grown a big beard. And through some expositional narr narration, we learn that Bambi was indeed right when the animals uh, got onto the plane and went back to base to meet General Robin and everybody else to debrief. Uh, they were getting ready. They, they were 
uh, approached or accosted by soldiers and, and were about to be taken into custody with, because the government agencies that are funding their operation decided that they were too risky to keep around and they were going to be eliminated. So Bambi was proven right. And Pooh uh, shot his way out of that scenario, took with his friends, they took off in a plane and they parachuted into nowhere and all went their separate ways to avoid uh, being captured. But now Pooh is distraught and out of uh, out of shape and just not taking care of himself. And he's just wandering through the woods from town to town, trying to keep a low profile, knowing that he killed his friend for what amounted to be the truth. Unfortunately, one day, Pooh runs into a father and son who are out in the woods hunting and he gets his picture taken. And when he says, get out of here, leave me alone. Uh, and he realizes, oh, well, I've been identified. I've been seen. And that kid took a picture and put it up on the internet, which means that picture is going to go viral any minute. And I've got to get out of here because I'm going to be recognized and they're going to come for me. But uh, it turns out that's too late <laughs> because the picture went viral pretty darn quickly. And before you know it, before Pooh can get back to the uh, tree where he stashed his stuff and take it all and start running, he a chopper flies in and he's accosted by three individuals wearing pretty serious tech armor. And they battle out, duke it out, but they don't realize that they're up against a pretty strong Pooh Bear. And Pooh manages to take down at least two of the three guards, either pretty seriously or permanently. And when he's getting ready to knock out the third, the chopper flies in again, unloading more soldiers. And he's confronted by General Robin, who tells him to settle down and to come home. And it turns out the one a tech armored uh, soldier that he almost took out but didn't quite is is a uh, woman with pigtails by the name of piglet so what do we like about this issue well it's a weird one that's for sure i mean if you're going to go the public domain route and try to do something different this is different in every sense of the word uh, at the same time it feels kind of similar because if you're a xenoscope fan and you read xenoscope comics this feels very similar to uh man goat and the bunny man which is their crypto or not crypto, cryptid um, action adventure series from cryptid creatures who live in the forest who are a buddy cop team and get on to all kinds of weird adventures with each other. So there's a lot of feel and similarity to that. It also helps that the artist, Jordi Tarragona, on this issue is usually the artist for Man, Goat, and Bunny Man. So there's definitely some overlap and some synergy there that feels like it might be even part of the same universe. But let's talk about, do we like the story? I think it's it's a clean, straightforward, simple, get weird and wacky kind of tale. Uh, the reason I think it generally works is because all the characters play it straight. There is no um, side winks to the camera, so to speak. You're not getting anybody who's playing playing the uh, their parts for jokes. All the characters are played with sincerity and straight and went with 100% seriousness. Not necessarily serious in tone, but they're just taking the material seriously. I'm sort of using terms that you would normally attribute to actors on movies, but it, may, but it applies equally well here. It just means you're sort of in a surreal or an alternate reality where these characters are part of an 80s or 90s action film, which is a lot of what this feels like. And so that mix of cute and cuddly with you know, testosterone fueled, uh, action and, uh, gritty, gritty action and gritty drama that it's kind of a surreal mix, but it's a mix. I think that generally works and it's an entertaining read. That's for sure. And it's certainly interesting. Uh, you're not going to find anything out there that looks exactly like this. What didn't we like about the issue? Just something small. It's a nitpick. The transition to the point where Pooh is forced to shoot Bambi and then where we catch up with him years later when he's sort of overweight and just mind, aimlessly wandering through the forest. There's a lot of space there and a lot of things happen in that time. Now you get with the explanation through some exposition, but that's a lot, that's a lot of, sh that's a lot of tell not instead of showing, which is not what you want in the comic. I mean, we should have seen that betrayal when Pooh got back to the base with General Robin. We should have at least seen him uh, some kind of montage or something to explain what happened there. What, how did that situation create the conflict when now Pooh rec realizes he shot Bambi when Bambi was right or something in there. You just have the, you have this hard jump. It's very jarring. And even though you explained what happened in the interim, you should have seen it a little bit. Um, it's not a big deal. It doesn't detract from the story too much, but you 
definitely get the impression that if this comic was maybe another five pages longer, you could have put that scenery in there and could have put the that, that character and world development in there. And that would have made that a much better read. But overall, it was still a, 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 an interesting and an entertaining comic. Let's switch gears to talk about the art. So as we mentioned earlier, this is drawn by Jordi Terragano, who does a generally great job on, on all the Zenoscope uh, comic books that he's on. Most notably, we've seen this similar style with the Man, Goat, and Bunny Man series, which has a lot of similarities and overlaps in tone and the type of storytelling here where you have these forest creatures or non-human um, people that are placed in this sort of gritty action scenarios. So the, a lot of the overlap is there. It works. Jordi Tarragon does great. This, this is a very detailed comic. A lot of work and effort went into the into the um, into the uh, artwork, into the lines, and the pencils and the inks, and putting it all together. And the coloring work from Juan Manuel Rodriguez is outstanding. Final thoughts: Pooh versus Bambi number one from Zenoscope is a weird, wild, strange, <laughs> surreal kind of. Uh, throwback to 80s and 90s action films, but with cute, cuddly animals as the main characters. Uh, as strange as it sounds, it works. Uh, the story is straightforward and clear. All the character motivations are understood, uh, and the artwork is fantastic. There's a little bit of a downside with a piece in the middle where it was more exposition than when it with scenes that should have been shown but other than that this is a, a great comic and a surprisingly entertaining read for a first issue in a new miniseries therefore we're going to give Pooh vs. Bambi number one from Zenoscope a nine out of ten it's it's weird but it works uh, so have at it definitely recommend it check it out pick it up uh, what do you think about using Pooh uh, as an a now a public domain character in weird and wild and strange uh situations now that you can pretty much do what you want with them as long as you don't run afoul of Disney or anybody else. Want to know, you know, your ideas and thoughts about how he could be used in different strange ways that, that could be very entertaining. Let us know in the comment section. Uh, also, please like, share, comment, subscribe uh, to follow along. And if you like reviews just like this one, please stay tuned through the outro.